Can you take us through the process of how Rob ended up here? Yeah, uh, so we've had multiple conversations over the last month or so, uh, just when their season finished up and, and things uh, went down there. And, you know, he, he had some other things that were kind of in the works, maybe to him trying to figure out um, which route he wanted to go. Um, things just kind of kept coming back to here uh, a little bit. And I think things ended up working out probably the way they were supposed to. And uh, pretty exciting. I mean, it was first kind of just started as an idea. And uh, the thought that it might happen was was pretty exciting. And then when it actually looked like it was really going to happen, it almost became a bit surreal uh, that he was going to end up coming back here. What do you kind of envision his role kind of being and where can he help you guys? Yeah, so it's not a coaching role, right. uh, obviously, but uh, just in terms of um, his communication with our players, with our support staff, uh, taking care of their personal development on and off the field, uh, you know, just kind of having another set of eyes at practice, uh, the guy that's been around the block a few times when it comes to some of that stuff, just to, we can bounce some ideas off of. And again, nothing that's hands-on from a coaching standpoint, uh, but just uh, a mentor type for the for the players, uh, you know, somebody that can just dot all their I's and cross all their T's in terms of how they're doing in the weight room, in the classroom, you know, just with strength and conditioning, with nutrition and those type of things. Is this, was this like a, a role that you would like to have filled anyway, or is it more or less that the right guy was available well, for this job? We've had we've had this position. Um, we've had Tanner Lubach was in the position. He took a job with the Astros um, within a few months of our season starting last year. Evan Hellman's done a tremendous job um, filling in for him once he left. Um, so it's it's been a job that we've had, um, you know, and wanting to transition the job to be. Uh, a baseball type coach position that's not hands-on coaching but just someone that's been uh, really involved in the game uh, in college baseball or maybe a young up-and-comer that wants to become a coach so uh, we got the ladder there with a former head coach and a guy that's won a lot of games. I guess in the staff meeting to discuss our him probably wasn't real long or contentious. Yeah I, I think the thing that um, you know with with Rob he's 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 got no ego, uh, so he's he's like, hey, I'll do whatever you guys need me to do, uh, but I'm not going to step on anybody's toes, and I want everybody to feel very comfortable. So there were quite a few conversations, just making sure him and Coach Christie were on the same page, Coach Harvell, myself, Coach Marcuso. Um, you know, he has to share a desk with Renee Brinkman right now too, so she had to be on board with it. So uh, now it was a it was a no brainer for us. It was going to make us better as a program, and uh, again, just having his experience to for me to lean on. You know, as a young new head coach, to, he, he's going to bring a lot of value. What does that say about? I mean, the culture, maybe about you guys, that a guy who has been all of your guys' bosses at one point <laughs> is now kind of flipping the role a little bit. Again, it goes, it just points to his leadership style has always been to be a servant leader. And so it, this is not something to him that he feels like he's below anybody. And I'll say this, all of us having worked for him in the past, we never felt like we were, we all felt like we were kind of working together and, and on the same page. And it wasn't this hierarchy of, of a level of leadership. It was, we're all kind of on the same same level and so um, I feel the same way I don't feel like I've, I've hired him and now I'm above him and it was the other way around and we're just working together and we're working for a common goal I feel like you're able to you know I don't know if lure him here is the right word but this is all hap all happens without the buzz that you kind of you guys kind of have as a program right now well I, I think uh, he's got a lot of ties here obviously um, having coached here built a, a, a dynasty in college baseball for five or six years where we were you know top 10 in the country each year so he's and he's got family here and you know so there's a lot of things that drew him back here um, I think maybe him you know seeing um, you know the staff that we have he's very comfortable with you know all the guys that he'd be working with so I think all those things kind of play into it what's kind of the, the next step as you guys are trying to make this program more of a national contender it seems like you have the people in place the recruiting is going on is there stuff with facilities or other things that you guys are looking at each other to take that next step yeah I think um, you know to have the sustained success and to be a team that is going to have a chance to go to Omaha and you, you look at kind of that snapshot of 2000 to 2007 ish um, we're playing at home we're playing postseason games you know, in this ballpark, that's what this ballpark was built for. Um, and we've got we've got everything we need here. Um, you know, I think it's just always um, you're 
upgrading things continuously. It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years. So from a player development standpoint, there's a lot of things that we could do to build and um, kind of streamline things. Um, we need more office space, as I alluded to, and, you know, just from a, you know, to have your strength coach and your and your strength and your your trainer in the same building is pretty important, you know. And now we the nutrition part of it's so big, so to have a an area where everybody can be together, I think would be would be important and really just kind of help continue to, to bring momentum for us. Could that be here somewhere? Somewhere? In yeah, this I think area? we've got plenty of space over here to, to do some things. So I've I've been I don't I'm not a very good artist, but I've I've sketched a few things uh, after the season. So. Hey, has uh, Jackson made a decision yet? What he's going to do? Jackson is still up in the air right now. Yeah. Any other uh, roster attrition, I guess, in the offseason guys? Like, I know Max Schreiber and Hellstrom were guys who theoretically could have come back. Are they? Yeah. The, the you know that we've had. A, I think we have four or five guys that had a chance to come back for the fifth year that most everybody had graduated. So I think most everybody's going to move on. Um, with Jackson still being the exception as to Gunnar Hellstrom, I think is going to potentially be a student assistant coach for us um, in the fall. And then depending on how, if he graduates in the fall or delays graduation, he'll be with us in the spring. Um, so others are moving on, uh, getting jobs and moving on with the real world. So was everything kind of how you left it? Or, <laughs> or? Well, certainly they, they had an amazing season this year. It's fun to watch them and, and follow them. and. and they just play incredibly hard, play together, play with a chip on their shoulder, and, and you know it was a great season. I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Can you kind of take us from your perspective, kind of how this all came together. With, with yeah, number. it was just something that Will and I talked about for the last month, and uh, just weighing all the opportunities. This was the the one that I felt like was best for for myself and for our family. View this as, as sort of a, a short-term thing, and maybe get back into coaching later on, or is this more of a lasting thing in your yeah. mind? You know, I've been asked that question a couple of times, and for me, my sole focus is is the here and now, and being here with Will and, and Jeff and, and Lance, and doing my very best to help these guys in every facet I can, and, and not looking out over the, the horizon. What's what's that like working with guys who you know technically by title you were maybe their boss before and now it's a little bit of a different. Well, dynamic. we we've been a team. You know, anytime that we've been together, we're all in it together, and titles don't matter. Everybody's had their certain amount of responsibility, and whatever I can do to help these guys and any hats I can wear to help is, is what I'm willing to do and, and looking forward to doing. Have you officially started the position yet? Officially started today, yes. What was your first act? <laughs> I forget we're just talking about players in, in the transfer portal and finishing up recruiting and, and doing that. What do you kind of see yourself doing? Is it more observe? Obviously, it's not a hands-on maybe coaching role, but it's more of an observing, or how do you kind of see it? Yeah, on together? campus recruiting, scouting reports, just a lot of different things, whether it be scheduling or different things like that, anything I can do to help them out. How much have you paid attention to, sorry, Nebraska baseball since you've been gone? Oh, I, I pay attention to it each and every year. I mean, it's just got a, a strong place in my heart. And, and over the years, I've always followed how they're doing and who's doing well and the seasons that they've had. Certainly, this one was a fun one to watch. Well, you mentioned they had a successful season last year. Where do you see this program going in the next couple of years? And what do you think this team can achieve? Well, I mean, their goal is to be in the postseason every year. and. and Playing in a four-team tournament, trying to get to another three-game series to, to get back to Omaha. That's something that's been accomplished here, and you know, certainly the expectations of the coaches and players are higher than anyone else's, and, and that's the, the expectation here within Nebraska baseball. Do you think that's doable in the next couple seasons? Absolutely. I mean, that's going to be the goal each and every year, certainly. Maybe this is a question better suited a year from now. I guess, are, are there challenges with trying to do what you want to do, but being limited in the fact that you're not a, a coach, you're, you can't necessarily have the hands-on? Well, I just think there's a lot of different things I can do to help the coaches and, and the players as well and, and pour into those guys and do everything I can to help them out and, and kind of being in the middle between the players and, and the coaches and, and be kind of a go-to guy for the players. When you were kind of looking at options after a and I mean, were, were there things that were kind of important to you for maybe what that next step was going to be, whether it be you know, right back into a head coaching job or something like this, or, or what, what was kind of your approach, I guess, to that decision? Well, I think just like for, for all of us, when, when you start looking at different opportunities from a job standpoint, your family has to come first. And for me, it was really staying in the Midwest corridor from Texas 
up this way because that's where my family is and that's where, what's most important to us at this point right now. And, and my daughter and granddaughter are here in town and you know, you know, so that makes it special as well. Probably looking forward to more pheasant hunting, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and it can't get here soon enough. But <laughs> maybe a little fishing right now. You got back here quite a bit though, didn't you, Rob? We or do. I would about do. once a year? Yeah, I would always come up in the winter when my daughter was in school here and I'd fly up, hunt with a bunch of friends. When she finished finals, I'd get in her car and, and drive her back to Texas and get 12 hours in the car with her. And, uh, so, like chasing the birds. So <laughs> this place means a lot to you. It I mean, absolutely even does. The baseball program, it, it does. So, standing here, you know, on staff at the University of Nebraska again. What are the emotions? It's it's a it's a pretty special feeling, almost surreal. I mean, Nebraska is a special place, and you know, from border to border in the state, it's incredibly supported in every sport here on campus. And I'm just thankful to be back and be a part of it again. How's it going sharing a desk with Renee? Well, it's <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up with her. I mean, she we all know she's the one that's in charge and I'm just doing everything she tells me to do on day one. <laughs> I was going to ask you too, Rob. With all your time in the SEC and you see the facilities and you see what some of the top teams in college baseball are doing, how close is Nebraska to that just globally from talent, facilities, everything else? Maybe what does Nebraska need to do to close that gap where they already did? Well, certainly the playing surface is as good as there is in the country and the stadium as well. And I know Coach Bolt's got a lot of ideas and plans that he would like uh, to see happen in, in the future as far as baseball operations type deal for, uh, for the players and, and from a recruiting standpoint. Certainly the indoor facility to Alex Gordon is, is second to none, but uh, more of an operations type addition I think would help things out from that standpoint. Mm -hmm.